Hello, Wide Job Dewey here. In today's little uh, job adventure, before uh, I'm up a little bit early today, I'm trying to beat the heat. And uh, if you look up there, you can see some clouds are brewing. Something's going to be pretty humid day today, probably. So hot, humid, and uh, probably not the best time for this, but today is uh, a little bit of a touch up, a little painting, actually, not even touch up, this is overhaul of this system. And um, what we've got here is a uh, failed attempt at painting these eaves here. This here's like the wood. This here's some paint, old paint. And now I'm scraping this here with the caution of having a mask on, having eye protection on, and doing it very daintily right now. But the um, point is I want to get off this old paint that's kind of bubbled up and filled its purpose. And trust me, a lot of places on this, the paint's already weathered off. So I just got me a little scraper here. Work the paint. And uh, if something's really stuck on there good, that's fine. You don't need to worry about it. Just the stuff that's uh, not. The reason why you want to have a mask is, of course, if there's any lead-based paint. And, you know, even though this top stuff might not be lead-based, stuff underneath it could be. All right, so I'm just getting all this stuff off here, the loose pieces off. And scrape this way, scrape that way. All right, so fairly good with the scraping. But let me do a little bit more here because there's more new stripes. OK, so after scraping most of it off, what I'd like to do next is take a little brush, or actually a big brush here, and give it dust. I can see all the dust coming off this thing. But likewise, you know, this is like a thick paintbrush here. But it uh, gets in the, the nicks and crannies of this thing. And get some of the finer stuff out of there. And um, what next is if you have nails, like down here. See right that? They look like they're pretty good, but I might just try to tap them in a little bit. Yeah, so if there's a nail that's actually protruding too much, or it's just not, you know, going to make it per se, I like to take it out and put it in, drive in a screw, a nice construction screw, that's um, thicker, just a little bit thicker than the nail that came out, and you know, long, and uh, that should fill the hole up just good and uh, keep keep stuff from having, you know, bad issues. Now you can see here there's a little bit of cracks in this thing. Um, especially down here, and we'll take care of that here in a minute. But first what we'll do is um, I'll finish dusting it off, and then we'll get ready to put a coat of prime, because this here really is bare wood, and even though some of your paints out there will say primer inside, they probably don't really mean to go on bare wood. So I'm going to dust some more, and I'll get the primer on this. All right, I can see I got my primer bucket hooked on the ladder here, and uh, just dip it in there, and, and this is pretty much uh, self-explanatory, but you just kind of slap it on, slather it, get up underneath this uh, drip guard if you can, and put a nice coat of primer. Try to drive it into those cracks a little bit. Like I said, the thicker cracks, oops, we'll have something else for that here in a minute. But um, for now, we'll just paint right over it and, and get the primer in there. Nice, happy little crack filler. Paint those nail heads good, because we'll be covering those up. Mm, and that's about it for the primer. I mean, I'll, I'll put some more, and don't forget, like, underneath here, too, right? Okay, right. to use as a, uh, a putty I'm going to make up to um, fill any cracks in this wood, we got this guy here again, Durham's uh, water putty. I think you've seen him before, and um, this should work just fine. What we're going to do is mix it up. We just need a little sample of it right now, though. This little container I made. And the mixture is three parts this guy, one part water. Now, what that means is, um, to make it simple, is if you were to do, like, three cups of this guy, get a measuring cup, then one cup of water, that should mix 
perfect is what they're saying. Now, I am just doing a small amount, see? And it dries to a tanness, so I think what they're saying is you don't want to use this for um, staining wood. But you can use it for something like this application. I'm just going to get a little bit of this right here. Uh, try to judge how much I need. Okay, maybe this much. Nice powdery substance. And uh, one more. Because this isn't so important as in what we have down here. And now what now we have down here, I need to kind of judge and add one part of water to it. So, you got me some trusted old water here. Mm. A drink for me. And one part, let's see. That probably is more than one part. But I'm um, start mixing here. What can I find to mix with? Yeah. Down, down, down. Always something around you can help use stuff. Okay, so just kind of mix it in here. And um, see what we can get. This is one of those things too, it's powder, you don't want to breathe it in. I'm outside doing this, and uh, if you mix it, and it's coming up too, uh, too watery, you can always add more powder. But likewise, if it's too um, thick, you can always add more water. But what you want, don't want to do is going back and forth and doing that over and over again, because that gets tiring. Okay, so like this, oh, in this case here I want to add a little bit more uh, powder. Mm. Maybe get my mixing rod out of there. Blah. Okay, back to mixing. Like I said, this is a really small amount that I need just for this one little spot. Or two or three little spots, can't remember what was up there. Okay, mm. that could use a little bit more of the uh, stuff, but I don't want to put my wet spatula in there. There we go. Mm. Hopefully that does it nicely without too thick. Now then, we'll get this stuff um, ready and uh, go up the ladder because I think this is about it. For consistency and uh, depending on the dry time of whatever you're using is kind of what you want to mix up. Now I don't think um, I might do one more part or partial part. So um, yeah, so like I said, I'm mixing up a whole bunch of this stuff. I'm just going to do a little area right now. Later I'll mix up more when I'm doing more areas and I find more areas to do. But whenever you're working on something like this or um, stucco patch, you want to look for the dry time or the working time. And this stuff here does take a while to dry. Of course it depends on you know the ambient temperature and stuff like that too. So um this is enough of that. Alright, up I go. Okay so the primer had time to, tr to dry here. It's been about maybe an hour, 30, 30 minutes to an hour I think it takes primer to dry. So it's pretty dry to the touch here. And um let's see if I can do this without falling off or dropping everything. So I'm gonna get some of the uh, the good stuff we just mixed up here. And you can see down here, you got the crack. Put it in the crack. Right, it's pretty simple. Fill it, scrape off some extras. And just um, go ahead and work it in to any um, thicker cracks like this one here. Well, this ain't really thick at all, like maybe a 32nd of an inch. But still, primer is not going to do it on its own per se. So, putty it on, scrape off the extra. Now, the reason why you want to scrape off the extra now is because it will save you time from sanding later. Alright. And you know what, if you really don't feel like doing the small cracks, that's fine, but um. 
it, it, it's good. You know, small cracks will get water in there, and water will in turn, if it's winter time, could freeze and start busting stuff apart. Erosion, per se. Mm hmm. All right, so I'm just going to do a little more of this here. And then this right here is going to take time to dry. Hmm, someone's here. But I'm not too sure how long it's going to take to dry. Like I said, temperature and uh, other factors, including the mixture that you made, will, uh, will, uh, you know, dictate how long it takes to dry. Okay, so that there, and don't forget to check underneath here if there's anything to be filled up underneath the bottom. All right, Is that corner. I'm gonna slap some more on there, and um, let it dry, and then we'll be back to buff it down with some sanding paper. Okay, so we allowed time for it to um, to dry. Like I said, time varies for this stuff here. If you put it on real thick, it's gonna take longer to dry. But in any case, after it's dried completely, take some sandpaper. This here's a 100 grit, so it's not too coarse, not too fine. And give it a buffing down. Likewise, make sure you have your mask on. You don't want to breathe in these fumes. And then, uh... Okay, so, got that done, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, brush it off again, it's going to take extra dust off. Keep brushing away from yourself, brush away. Alright, next what we do here is we'll hit it back with the primer again. And um, recoat anywhere that you sanded and um, had to brush off again. Go ahead and recoat that with primer all over again. Remember to get the underneath too. And down here in the heaviest parts. And basically, same as the idea with primer, is uh, you're going to get coated here, try to get no drips going. And let that primer dry for its time, which in this case it's a half hour, an hour, depending on how hot it is type of thing. And then we back to um, paint. So I'll finish the priming, and next we'll be painting. Okay, so once again I've given this ample time to um, dry, nice and dry, get onto the touch. and um, I have stirred up my paint, and what I'm doing here is, uh, like most people should do, is an exterior grade paint. And, um, you know, painting with the, uh, let's slop it on here, painting with the grain, per se. So I'll go ahead and um, paint, you know. No secret to it, per se. Just that I don't try to get any runs in there. And um, get up underneath the uh, drip edge if you can, depending on how tight it is, just in case. This here's once this dries, an exterior grade is going to help, um, of course, prolong the life of the wood and everything here. But also, you know, it keeps the moisture out from the rest of the stuff because that um, that putty type stuff we used earlier doesn't like moisture. So if it's going to rain and it's not dry, it's going to suck up that water. So this right here. Gonna do a nice coat of it, exterior grade paint, and um, you know, choices about colors. Um, here, desert, you probably don't want too dark because the darker something is, usually the more heat it absorbs, more sunlight it absorbs. Now, granted, this might fade, but then they also said if you do um, semi glosses or glosses, they uh, last longer. Likewise, there's some kind of a stuff you can put into and uh, kind of inhibit the like a UV protectant per se, either in the paint itself and or like another coat. 
So, this is about it, right? Anything more than this would be just like watching paint dry, and I doubt anyone wants to watch that. But you never know, maybe someone does. So, any questions, comments, you know, leave them below. And, uh, I'm gonna finish this little job up here. And, uh, don't know what else to say right about it. So, thanks for watching. Like I said, questions, comments, remarks, go ahead. Odd job doer, out.